Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson with Management 2. We are now on chapter 15, the final chapter of this course. I know you're all happy. Managing operations, quality, and productivity. Our learning outcomes are to describe and explain the nature of operations management, identify and discuss the components involved in designing, if designing effective operations systems, uh, discuss organizational technologies and their role in operations management, Identify and discuss the components involved in implementing operation systems through supply chain management. Explain the meaning and importance of managing quality and total quality management. And last but not least, explain the meaning and importance of managing productivity, productivity trends, and ways to improve productivity, which we all would like to do. Uh, as always, uh, be sure to read Management in Action. Uh, very important uh, stories there. Read the one, two, three, four, five there as well. Uh, very pertinent to our chapter that we are going to be reviewing today or whatever day uh, you check out the lecture. Uh, operations management. This is a total set of uh, managerial activities used by an organization to transform resources. So this is the key point. Transform resources, uh, inputs into products and services or both. Right. So your resources are your people, uh, you know, your raw materials, things like that. And you want to transfer those or transform those into uh, just raw materials and people into products, right? So we have wood and we have people, but we transform them into skateboards, right? Uh, we have uh, people and we transform those into payroll services, things of that nature. Uh, manufacturing uh, is a form of business that combines and transforms resources, inputs into tangible outcomes. So when we say tangible, the things that we can touch, right? So manufacturing deals with making tables, making computers, uh, making cars, things of that nature, not services. Uh, service organization is an organization that transforms resources into intangible, I mean, you can't touch them, output and creates time or place utility uh, for its customers, right? So things that you can use uh, through services, right? I, if I come clean your car, Carpets, you can't touch that I clean your carpets, but you see that your carpets are now clean. Uh, so, you know, you have to make sure that you know and understand the difference between a, in, a, something that's tangible and intangible. Uh, the product service mix, uh, how many and what kind of products or services or both uh, to offer. Right. So, for instance, uh, my mom purchased this uh, super duper uh, vacuum way back in the day. Uh, and, uh, you know, so that that was a product. Right. Uh, but she purchased it from a company that uh, completed a service, which was a carpet cleaning service. Right. So they do the service, but they also may sell a product. So they did the carpet cleaning service, but they sold the product of, of the vacuum. Uh, so, you know, you have to understand that, you know, some places sell products and services. Some places sell solely products and some places uh, places sell solely uh, uh, services. Now, the capacity is something that you have to know and understand as a business. This is the amount of product services or both that can be produced by an organization, right? So how many calls can you take? How many widgets can you produce? How many calls can you produce on your assembly or how many cars can you produce on your assembly line? You have to know what your capacity is. Uh, the facilities is a, phys a physical location where products or services are created, stored or distributed, right? So this is the actual facilities where we make the products, where we, you know, store them uh, and then ship them out to be sold. Uh, the location is a physical positioning or geographic site of the facilities, right? So location means, like they say, location, 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 right, is where you physically put the manufacturing plant or where you physically put uh, the bar or the, the restaurant, right? So if you want to find somewhere like a, you know, where it's a good place for a restaurant, a bar, a club or something like that, what people typically do is they take that little clicker thing that you see have people have at clubs and they go stand on the corner and they click and they see how many cars go up and down that particular street. If it's a lot of business, then hey, this is where we want to be because we don't even want the, we don't only want the people who are coming to our restaurant. We also want the people who just drive by and see the restaurant, bust a U-turn and then slide into the restaurant, uh, because, uh, they saw you know, the product placement there, and that's where they're going to go eat. Uh, the layout, uh, and the layout is very important. Some of you may not think it is, but it is. Uh, the physical configuration of facilities, the arrangement of equipment within facilities or both, right? So how is your organization laid out? And specifically, how is your department, right? So my department, it goes straight back. I sit in the front. Everybody sits b behind me. But other uh, people, other departments within my area, they have what you call like a bullpen where the manager sits uh, right like where I am and then the people are spread out so they can kind of kind of see them uh, You know, so different departments that do different things. You have to have different types of layout uh, Product layout is a physical configuration of facilities arranged around the product used uh, when large quantities of a single product are needed Right, so large quantities so we have to turn out table after table after table 
Uh, but in other instances, you may have to turn out two tables and you have to may turn out, uh, turn out of uh, four or 10 chairs. Uh, process layout is a physical configuration of facilities arranged around the processes, right? So specifically processes, um, used in facilities that create a process or a variety of products. So if you have a variety of products, obviously your process and your layout is going to be a little bit different than if you only have a one. So I want you to, to review these on your own. These are the different types of product layout and different process layouts, right? So all incoming jobs and materials, they go through the different steps and then you have your finished product and then it goes, uh, uh, to be sold. And we'll, a little bit later in the chapter, we'll talk about you know, how things go from raw materials to work in process uh, to uh, completed goods to uh, the cost of goods that are actually sold. Um, so approaches to facilities layout. When a manufacturer produces large quantities of a product, uh, it may arrange its facilities in an assembly line, right? So just like cars, you random assembly line. You do the, the wheels, I do the doors, uh, she does uh, uh, the, the engine. You know, that, that's, that's how assembly line works. Uh, in a process layout, the work uh, such as pay, uh, patients in a hospital or custom pieces of furniture uh, moves through a variety of uh, and various workstations. Locomotives and bridges are both manufactured in fixed position layout. So think about in a hospital, uh, I may do the x-rays and somebody else does, you know, uh, uh, some other type of care and another person does their, their pr prescriptions. Another person handles things in a pharmacy. Uh, so although it doesn't look like a assembly line, but it has the same type of premise. Uh, be sure to read at your service how to, uh, get to a, a human, right? So think about that. You call in the customer service and do you automatically hit press zero, zero, zero? Cause I want to talk to somebody. I don't want to use this automated line. Um, I, I prefer the automated line. I prefer chat because I prefer if I can get something done without actually talking to someone works perfectly fine for me. It's funny because I, I polled my team and I said, okay, what would you like? Would you like to text or, or would you like to chat or would you like to call somebody? And half of the people uh, wanted to, to chat. You know, some of the people were more technical savvy and then other people want to get on the line and talk with individuals, right? If I can get something done without talking to somebody, then I'm going to do it that way. Uh, fixed position layout, uh, physical configuration of facilities arranged around a single work area used for the manufacture of large and complex products such as airplanes, right? So uh, there's a video out there if you look up Boeing and you can see them manufacture an airplane and it goes like the whole thing. Like you know, Obviously, they speed up the video and it shows you the, all the different things that people do, but that's a fixed position layout, right? You're not going to move an airplane down an assembly line. Some, the airplane is going to stay there and I'm going to work on the windows and you're going to work on the engine. Somebody else is going to work on the wings, things of that nature. Um, cellular layouts, a physical configuration of facilities used when families of products can follow similar f uh, flow paths, right? So just meaning that, hey, uh, this product can go here, 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 and it can veer off to A, and another one go here, 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 and can veer off to B, go straight, the other one here, 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 and it veers off to C, right? So, but all the way up through, you know, the majority of the process, it's all the same, right? Uh, so, for instance, if our skateboards all look the same except for the design on the bottom, then they just flow through freely until we get to the, you know, when it goes off to be designed. Uh, technology is a set of processes and systems used by organizations to convert resources into products and services, right? So, uh, we want to convert these resources, right? Wood, uh, you know, knowledge, things that we have into products and services uh, so that we can sell those products and services to the general market. Uh, automation, which is a big thing, uh, the process of designing work so it can be pro uh, completely or all, almost completely performed by machines, right? We don't want people to do this. We want one person to monitor the machines, right? But we don't want people doing all of the, the actual duty. So automation is very, very important, uh, especially to large companies. Uh, simple automatic, uh, control mechanism, uh, which is, which is great. So think about this. If you have, you know, central air in your house, thermostat test the air, has a sensor, detects high temperature information, then it turns uh, off the furnace. That's the control. If it detects low temperature, then it turns on the furnace, kicks up the heat and heats the house up, right? Uh, it's, it's not very complex. It's not rocket science. It just says, Hey, if A happens, then we're going to B. Or if, uh, C happens, then we're going to D. Uh, all automation includes feedback, information, sensors, and a control mechanism. Uh, simple thermostat is an example of automation. Another example is uh, Bennington's uh, Distribution Center in Italy. Uh, orders are received, items are pulled from stock, and uh, packaged for shipment, and invoices prepared and transitioned uh, with no human intervention. Right, So no human is involved in, in all of this. Same thing if you see some of the robots that create cars uh, out on assembly line. Uh, computer assisted uh, manufacturing technology that relies on computers uh, to design or manufacture 
products and there's a lot of that going on it's a lot of that out there and like I said you just need to be the individual that knows the technology knows how to operate it and you will not be out of a job just think about it if you go to Home Depot uh, and there are five tellers and all of a sudden they say we're going to put these four self checkout things and then so it's only going to be the person that really can you know handle and troubleshoot everything on those four checkout stations that's going to be the one individual sitting there in the bull bullpen that says hey you know oh I you know mister uh, customer number one do you need your receipt let me help you with that customer number two do you need for me to show you where the barcode is so you can swipe that if I go to the store and they have self checkout I'm in that line if they don't then I'm in the regular line but if they do I'm in the self checkout line 100 percent a robot is any artificial device that is able to perform functions ordinarily uh, a thought to be appropriate for human beings right so just like I you know I've mentioned before about the little vacuum thing the little circular thing that goes around your house bumps into a wall then it goes left bump to another wall then it goes right uh, so these are you know different robots and uh, you know as they continue to try and attempt to improve the performance of robots and artificial intelligence uh, we'll see new uh, newer and better things come the biggest thing right now is, is a car a self-driving car right you know can this car drive itself and there not be any incidents and you know hopefully nobody gets killed uh, supply chain supply chain management is a process of managing operations control resource acquisition and purchasing and inventory so all uh, so as to improve overall efficiency and effectiveness and that's the key words we want to over we want to improve our overall efficiency we want to work as efficient as we can and our effectiveness uh, in, in what we do uh, if we work more efficiently and more effective we will save more money and we'll also earn more money as well I want you to be sure to read Leading the Way, uh, combining tech sh technology and artistry. Uh, and they have the Circle A, um, uh, you know, example right there. So you have to think about that. And I've, you know, I've been on some Hollywood sets and things. Uh, so you have to understand it's a lot that goes into making these different cartoons and, and shows with green screens and things of that nature. Uh, you know, if you, if you think it all the way through, if you've been on a set before, you'll know and you will understand it. And it's, it's, it's quite, quite interesting. So be sure to read that story. Don't just, you know, gloss over or skip it, uh, cause it is actually very, very, uh, good story. Uh, purchasing management or what they call procurement. Uh, so if you're, uh, you know, a procurement officer, uh, buying materials and resources needed to produce products and services, right? So, Everything is what you need to produce products and services. I need a copier uh, because a copier needs for me to make these copies in order for me to tell my customer or client what I need to do. Right. So that's part of uh, that individual's job in purchasing management. You need to purchase these goods and hopefully at a good price uh, for the company. See if you can get us some breaks. Uh, see if you can, you know, wheel and deal and uh, save us some money on the 15 copiers that, that you need to buy. So uh, another word for purchasing management, you can look up uh, procurement and it will be there. Um, inventory control, uh, managing the organization's raw materials, uh, work in process and finished goods and products in transit, right? So if you have your, you know, when you get to your accounting class, you'll see this, right? So you'll see raw materials and you'll see materials going to work in process, uh, in process or in progress. And then they go to finished goods and you have your finished goods inventory. And then they go to cost of goods sold because now you've sold those uh, goods and you're just saying, Hey, this is how much it costs us to actually make the goods. This is how much it costs for the wood. This is how much it costs for the labor. This is how much it costs for the manufacturing. Uh, overhead uh, just in time uh, a method that's which is, is very complex to to pull off but if you do it'll save the company a lot of money inventory system that has necessarily uh, that has necessary materials arriving as soon as they are needed right so as soon as they're needed bam they're there uh, so that the production process is not interrupted so I don't need a bunch of beef that comes in I just need this much beef and that's how much beef I need for the day so it keeps it fresh um, so this is the inventory types, purposes, and sources of control. So the type is raw materials. Uh, provide the materials needed to make the product. Uh, the source of controls, purchasing modules and systems. Work in process or WIP. So they say your whip bin, your work in process bin, if you ever heard that term before. Uh, enable overall production uh, to be divided into stages of manageable size. Uh, that's the shop floor, floor control systems. Finished goods provide a ready supply of products or customer de uh, on customer demand and enable long, efficient product run production runs. Uh, high level production scheduling systems in uh, conjunction with marketing. And then in transit, which is your pipeline. Uh, so, for instance, like you take it back, you know, step and you have to go into sales. You have your pipeline. Everything's moving like, hey, I'm working on these people and they'll be ready for next month. But these are my sales for this month. You want to distribute products to customers and then transportation and distribution control systems. Right. Because 
because you every product that you have doesn't get immediately you know we don't have a transporter device not just yet where you could just teleport something uh, to someone else you still have to have it shipped via you know FedEx UPS uh, plane or something like that uh, uh, before it gets to someone so, uh, so you have to know how that works as well uh, quality is the total quality or the totality of features and characteristics of a product or service that bear on its ability to satisfy uh, stated or implied needs, right? So quality is how well does it get the job done that I need done, right? So if I purchase something and it gets the job done the way that I need it done, then I feel like it's of good quality. But if it doesn't get the get it, get the job done to the way that I want it done, right? And this sometimes it's why we say perception is reality, then you know it's to me it's not not good quality, right? It's all, you know, in in the the eye of the the person looking at it. Uh, these are the eight dimensions of quality. A performance, a product's primary operating characteristic, examples of uh, autom automobile acceleration and a television's picture qu uh, clarity, right? So how clear is the picture? Uh, features, uh, supplements to a product's basic functioning characteristics, such as power uh, windows on a car. Uh, reliability, uh, probability of not ma uh, malfunctioning during a specified period. Uh, conformance, the degree to which a product's design and operation characteristics uh, meet established standards. Uh, durability, a measure of product life, uh, serviceability, the speed of ease of repair, uh, aesthetics, uh, how a product looks, feels, tastes, and smells, and perceived quality as seen by the customer, as I, as I notated before. So you, I want you to be sure, read those eight dimensions of quality and read it again and then read it again at least three times. You need to know and understand those, those eight dimensions. Uh, uh, Malcolm Baldwin Award, you can go ahead and review that one on your own. Uh, and last but not least, we talk about total total quality management and strategic commitment by top management to change its whole approach to a business in order to make quality a guiding factor in everything it does. So quality first, right? Quality is what we're focusing on. We're not focusing on quantity. We're focusing on quality, right? A lot of times uh, when I interview people, I ask a question, I say, you have to pick one, quality or quantity, and you can't pick both. Right. And I'm looking for an answer. And typically people will pick quality. Uh, but what I'm also actually looking for, well, I won't tell you that, you know, because maybe I may interview you someday. So uh, but but you're looking for, uh, you know, quality and, and that's the typical answer. And that's a good one. I'm not looking for quantity uh, so much because we, if without that quality, then that quality is going to go out the door. If I sell bad quality deals, then, uh, you know, although I sold 20. 10 of them are going to go away and go to another company because my quality was not good. Uh, so be sure to, to review the, the definition that right there of total quality uh, management as well. Uh, actually, let me go back for a second. Uh, so employee involvement, right? So how much are employees involved? The materials, the technology, and the methods are all things that go from your strategic commitment, right? Remember, it goes strategic, tactical, operational. Uh, these all go into your uh, quality improvements. And as more you improve your quality, the better your quality is, uh, the more you'll sell and the more, um, you know, longstanding customers you will have. Uh, value added analysis is the comprehensive evaluation of all work activities, materials, flows and uh, paperwork to determine the value uh, that they add uh, for customers. Right. So is this add a lot of value? If it doesn't add a lot of value, then maybe we should scrap it and do something else with it or not do it at all. Uh, benchmarking, which is very, very important comparing to yourselves uh, to the top level, uh, you know, competition. Uh, the process of learning how other firms do things in exceptionally high quality manner. So, you know, it's not that you copy them. You see, hey, what are they doing? That's great. Let's take it. Let's replicate it. Uh, what are they doing wrong? Let's stay away from it and let's not do that. Uh, outsourcing, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, source source of contentment, uh, you know, subcontracting services and operations to other firms that can perform ch uh, them on cheap, cheaper or better. Right. And just remember, outsourcing does not mean necessarily mean that it's in another country. That's called offshoring. But outsourcing means that, hey, I make skateboards, but somebody in the city of Bell can do it a little bit cheaper. So I'm going to have you guys create the whole skateboard. Then I'm just going to do the design. Right. That's that's called outsourcing or having somebody else do something that my company company typically did. Uh, cycle time is the time needed for the organization to develop, make and distribute products or services. Right. So to in order to what's cycle time, how much time you need to go through all those steps. Uh, guideline for increasing the speed of operation. So you want to start from scratch. It's usually easier than trying to do uh, what the organization does now faster. 
Uh, number two, you want to minimize the number of approvals needed for something. So cut out that red tape, all that bureaucratic action. Uh, number three, use uh, work teams as a basis for organization. Teamwork and cooperation work better than individual effort and conflict. Uh, four, develop and adhere to a schedule, right? Schedules are important. A properly designed schedule can greatly increase speed. Number five, do not ignore distribution. Uh, making something faster is only part of the battle, right? Remember, we talked about quality. Uh, not only do we want it faster, but we want it better. And six, integrate speed into the organization's culture, right? To have people get a sense of urgency. Uh, as everyone under, hopefully everyone understands the importance of speed, uh, things will naturally, uh, get done in, in that type of manner. If everybody's just logging around, just walking around slow, I don't have a good sense of urgency, then things are not going to get done in a, a very sufficient, uh, a manner that you will like. <clears throat> Productivity, need to know that one as well. Economic measures of efficiency that summarizes what it is produced uh, relative to resources uh, used to produce it. Right. So uh, are we very productive? Uh, does it take do I have a lot of waste? Right. So if it, I, I want to make this table, but then I have five to ten pounds of wasted wood. That's not very efficient. That's not very productive. And if you see here, uh, you know, productivity equals outputs divided by inputs right so if you're talking about wood you're talking about metal sheet metal anything that you're talking about that's the formula that you will use <clears throat> all right that's them on the assembly line at the car for the you know for automobile making uh once you be sure to the figure five fifteen point four uh be sure to to review the the image but i also want you to ensure that you uh, review this about manufacturing and service productivity growth trends uh, as well, uh, very, very important, very key uh, concepts that are there. And we are now to the end. So here's your summary of learning outcomes and key points. As always, if I've said all the other 15 chapters, be sure to review the summary, right? And this is your very last chapter, uh, you know, very last quiz that you'll be going over and then taking your, your, your last test. Uh, so you want to make sure that you, you finish strong. Uh, some people start off great in the end and they start to fade toward the middle and get terrible towards the end. Why don't you start off as good and then get to great and then get to even better uh, towards the end. Uh, so, But those summary of, of learning outcomes is going to help you uh, to do to, do so. A uh, very, very important uh, information that, that will assist you uh, in your learning. So that's it. Uh, we're, we're at the very end, 15 chapters. Hopefully you've learned a lot from all these chapters, learned a lot about managing. Uh, if you're not a manager let, yet, then you learned about how, you know, you should be managed, uh, you know, and, and maybe you need to escalate things up if you're not being managed that way. And then for those you already managed or managers, you get these these new tools that you can you know implement to the workplace. Those of you who are future managers, uh, you know what you what you can and will do, and uh, you can get out there and, and be very effective from the from the gate. Uh, so as always, uh, I want you guys to have a good day, a great week, but be sure to check out the announcements, uh, do your homework assignment, you know, check out the supplemental videos, check out the lecture, uh, be sure to, to, to update, uh, you know, everything that you need to know prior to taking your quiz and or your test. Uh, as, as I said, as always, everyone, please have a good day, a great week, and it's uh, been a great semester.